Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos, Making Music with Melodyne. And today I'm very excited because we are covering multi-track drum quantization. Now this is something a lot of people have been asking for for a long time, myself included, and it just wasn't possible before ARA. Now that we have ARA implemented, we actually can go in and quantize some multi-track drums. A couple of quick things you should know before this one. This does require Melodyne Studio. That's the flagship version. Two, you're going to want to make sure that all of the audio files you are quantizing are in the session and also the exact same length, same starting time, same ending time. That's kind of crucial to making sure that you get the best uh, behavior out of this and really get the quantization that you're looking for and maintaining good phase coherency. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look at this here. I've got a multi-track drum session. Let's give this a listen. Okay, pretty straight ahead. This was recorded to a click, so it's close and it was recorded very well. Uh, but it's not quite on, and we may want to tighten it up just a little bit. So let's open up the Melodyne window and take a look right here. We've got in here, we've got our kick, our snare, we've got our floor tom, our overhead, and also a mono overhead. Now, there are two other tracks here, a kick sample and a percussion track. Those are both, both uh, virtual instruments that were not part of the original multi-track recording. So we are not going to do anything with those for this first part. We're going to come back to those later on. For this first part, we just want to make sure we're using our multi-track drums. Now we see those over here and they're all on top of one another. This happens a lot with multiple percussion instruments. They're kind of thought of as unison. If you see this, it's not a big deal. There's a button over here in the lower right hand corner that says spread unison tracks. It's not actually changing anything. It is only spreading these tracks out to give you a better visual reference. Okay. Now that I have all of these tracks in here, I actually could go in and just do some editing, right? I could select some of these notes right here and edit them. However, if you'll notice, they don't all have the exact same starting time and they're not all the same length. Those mics were in different positions, so the signals arrived at different times. So if I were to stretch and move these, this would throw the phase coherence all out of whack and we can't do that with multi-track drums. So, we need to use a different method in order to do that. And what we basically need to do is pick one of them to be our template. I usually pick one of the overhead tracks because that's got a good mixture of everything, right? It's got the hi-hat, it's got the kick drum, the snare, the floor tom, everything in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my kick drum, my overhead mono track. This is gonna be my reference point. Uh, what I wanna do then is have every other track match the note assignment mode of it. So what I will do is I will go into my overhead and I will go into note assignment mode and I will come down here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're seeing this window in the left side. That's this button right here, right? The info pane. You need to make sure that you see that. At the very bottom, you'll see file and this little cog right here. And we've got load note assignment data from a compatible file. I'm going to be making this match the overhead mono. I'm going to make all of these match the overhead mono track today. And we're basically loading the note assignment mode data from one track into the other. Once that's done, you can go back into your edit mode and it's time to move on and do the same thing to the next drum you want to quantize as well. I'll do the same thing here. I'll take my floor tom. I will go into note assignment mode, come down here to the info pane, load note assignment data from a compatible file. And again, I will choose overhead mono. You're gonna do this for all of the tracks that are you are quantizing here. I'll come back in just a minute when I've done the rest. And we're back and here you see my kick drum and you'll notice it looks a little different now than, the, uh, than it did before. It's got all the other hits in there. As a matter of fact, all of these tracks look exactly the same right now. And that's because the note assignment data from the mono overhead has been applied to all the other tracks. So now they all look the same. This is a little weird at first if you're not used to it. However, it's actually really useful because what it does is it makes sure that this has been done correctly. If all of these tracks do not look identical and don't line up perfectly with each other, then this was not done correctly. Okay, and now that it has been done, 
we can actually go in and edit these as we see fit, right? Like if I wanted to take this hit right here and just move it directly over to the bar line, I'll just select those notes and go to my time tool and then just drag those notes over just like that. So if you don't want to edit everything massively, you just want to do a couple of minor fixes, that's pretty easy to do. However, you may also want to use the timing macro and quantize all of these drums. Now that we have the same note assignment data for all the multi-track drums, we actually can go in and add our percussion and our kick sample in there as well. We don't want to get those mixed in with the note assignment data, but when it's just time to quantize, you can add those in. Now we can select all of these notes in here, come to our timing macro. I'm going to choose an eighth note because that's kind of the way the drummer is playing. And as this plays, I'm just going to quantize this 100% right to the grid. Okay, so now you can see these are all right on the grid right here, and I'll turn this on and off, and you can actually hear the difference. When it's off, you'll hear the kick flamming and the timing's a little looser. So let's start with it off and listen to this. Nice. I like that. We've just taken all of those drums and quantize them exactly to the grid. So let me turn this off for a second because I want to show you something else that we could do right here. Let's say we want to be uh, a little bit more creative. So maybe I don't want to just put these to the grid. I might want to actually change the performance here. And so let's say these drums were recorded, but I want them to swing a little bit more. That's not going to be a problem, right? I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's take this snare track and right underneath there, I'm going to put uh, an instrument track. And you can do this with a MIDI track as well, but now with Melodyne and ARA, you can actually drag and drop from an instrument track to a MIDI or instrument track. I'm going to hold down control so it doesn't move in time, and it will convert that audio to MIDI. Now it asks about the conversion type. I'm choosing percussive because these are drums, and this will make us a MIDI track right here that perfectly matches up with my snare. Easy. So I'm going to move this to the side over here because I already did this with a few tracks, with the kick, with the snare, and with the floor tom, because those are my key ones right there that I really want to change this about. And I turn this into one MIDI track. And we can actually hear this. And if we zoom in and look at it, you'll see it's quantized directly to the grid too. And when we listen to it, we get... Okay, and because this is MIDI, we can actually come in here to Pro Tools and use our MIDI real-time properties. So what I'm going to do is quantize this with some swing, and you'll actually see these notes move up here when I turn this on. We have now quantized this in a different way. This now has a swing feel, so let's listen to it. Okay, a totally different feel. Now what we need to do is we need to turn this into audio that Melodyne can deal with. So I'm going to take this track and commit it, turn it into audio. Now part of the reason that I want to do this is because I like this MIDI program ability. I like the ability to change the feel, but these MIDI drums sound like garbage. They're not very good sounding at all, but I want to use these as a quantization reference for the rest of my drums. So I'm going to put Melodyne on them, like so. Let's just put Melodyne on there, edit that, and we'll see it shows up with Melodyne. Now, one more quick thing that we want to do right here. I don't want to hear these MIDI drums or the audio version of them, so we could just mute them, but it would be possible to unmute them later on. So instead, what I do is come into the clips and hit Command M, and that actually mutes the clip. And because Melodyne is part of Pro Tools now, the muting of clips and clip gain and stuff like that happens after Melodyne. So we actually still can go in here. So we actually still can go in here to Melodyne and see those MIDI drums and see the swung performance of them without listening to them. So now what I'm going to do is take the rest of my drums and I'm going to quantize all of those to the swung drums. So I'm going to come over here and instead of using a grid, 
I'm going to come to a track and choose those MIDI drums and bring that over. And once that is set to 100%, I'll hit OK and we'll listen to these drums. Very, very cool. We have now taken these multi-track drums and not only quantized them, but swung them a little bit. Very, very, very cool. I hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.